Hi Leo, welcome to your June 2017 tarot reading, love and general. I love it when it's the monthly readings because I don't actually have to remember the date like I do with the daily readings. It's a lot easier, it's like June, that's it, it's June. Thank you Leo for all your comments, your likes, shares and for subscribing to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Gemstone Tarot taking you through the highs and lows, the trials and tribulations of Leo's love life and general through June. Actually, your readings have been quite nice, haven't they, Leo? For quite a while, so I'm sure I've jinxed it. <laughs> I am using, for most of the spread, the Mythic Tarot, Juliet Sharman Burke and Liz Green, a real classic based on Greek myths, but also with most of the traditional tarot symbolism as well, which for me, I'm a Greek scholar and I love my tarot. If they could shove a few celebrities in, everything I like would be all in one place. <laughs> now there's an idea for tarot, Greek celebrity tarot. Food for thought, Leo, food for thought. So I'm going to look at the basic story of these nine cards and then I am going to ooh, that one, draw some love oracle cards as well so we can see what's happening with the love life. Let's have a look. If you want a private reading, Leo, you can book me in the description box below. Ooh. Leo. Very interesting actually. Cripes. You've got a lot going on, haven't you? <sighs> Whoa. Okay. We've got the Eight of Swords in the reverse. Nine of Pentacles in the reverse. It's my Conchita card. I will explain that later. The Ace of Wands. The Five of Swords, the Two of Pentacles in the middle of the reading, Ten of Swords, lovely. <laughs> Actually, it's not as bad as it looks. It just looks so gruesome, doesn't it? Snake heads and people collapsed on the floor and, you know, the Five of Pentacles. The Ace of Swords and the Six of Swords in the reverse. If I look at the first card and the ninth card as an entry and an exit, there is no exit is what I'm getting, Leo. You feel that there is no exit. Six of Swords represents Mercury in Aquarius. This is, if you think about Mercury, Mercury is communication, travel, thinking, strategizing. Aquarius as well, new ways of doing things, very, very rational. New ways of traveling, ways of getting away, ways of making an escape. That's why the Six of Swords, when you look at it like this, is always somebody escaping from the choppy waters to the calmer waters in a vessel a boat or some of them are a raft but either way same thing they pack up their troubles here the troubles the swords into the boat and they're off and there's a certain sense of blown hair freedom you know i'm off <sighs> winds behind me i've escaped this is in reverse you feel kind of trapped in something leo for some of you, this is to do with work. And when I say work, I don't just mean job either, or life purpose, to do with the material, to do with what's here and now, what you're doing for a career. You could be a stay-at-home mother. Same thing, I mean work in terms of being a stay-at-home mother, work in terms of going out to work, doing both, um, being a stay-at-home dad, 
being a bit of both, whatever it is. I don't just mean going off to an office because these days people's work is all over the place. It's family, it's working from home, it's going in and doing half a job here and half a job there. Whatever comprises your life purpose and how you gain material things may be not quite working for you. Got this two of pentacles here. These pentacles hold up the table. The person is doing okay. You don't just want to do okay. Whether this is about your family or whether this is about a job or both, you may feel you're going through the motions and you're not really shining. Leo is a very heart-centered, big-hearted, passionate, energetic sign. By energetic as well, not all Leos are leaping around, jumping off cliffs and going on mountain biking trails, although lots of them are. Some Leos may not do any sports like that, but they're energetic in here and they're energetic in here. Something about this two of pentacles just telling me that something is not lighting your fire. Now, underneath all this as well, there is the desire, because we have the Ace of Wands. This is a fire sign card. You're a fire sign. Aces themselves are new energy. Think of it as a long, it's not a firework, because fireworks go boom and they're out. This is more long burning. Aces have longevity, more like a year, a few months. So you, this, if you look at it, this kind of represents Leo to me. I know there's a ram and all the rest of it, but it represents Leo in the kind of proud king with an idea and some fire, okay? You do have ideas and they are good. Something has been holding you back. There's definitely been or is going to be, or I think it's ongoing though. I don't think this is new. There's been something to do with either leaving a job, leaving a situation. I've got the five of pentacles. This is somebody who leaves a house with gold affixed to the front and they go off in a shabby cloak and they're still going. This means they've got a really good reason to go. It might mean they're homeless and poor for a while, but they'll take that chance. They're ready to leave. It also means feeling out in the cold, like this person literally is out in the cold, away from the nice, lovely, cosy house, away from the comforts and the money. So it could be, some of you have experienced trouble at work, if you do go to an office or place of work, redundancy or a business that you've got that's not taking off in the way that you want it to. Now, I would say, looking at these cards, that you are, it's about half and half. Some of you are dealing with walking away from some kind of relationship scenario. Five of Swords. This represents Venus in Aquarius. This is to do with fears and misgivings about a relationship about something to do. It doesn't mean necessarily a love relationship. It can do. It can be your relationship to money, your relationship to work, your relationship to your family. But it's five. It's unstable. It's, ooh, it's wobbles. It's, I'm not sure about this. And something is definitely ending. This is ten of swords. I mean, it's the end of a cycle. It's a ten. It's Every single sword, you know, you kind of have run out of ideas at this point. You've tried everything. In the Rider Waite Tarot, that is a man lying on his back with ten swords in his back. It either represents a betrayal, and for some of you it is a betrayal, but you seem to be taking that quite well in your stride. Or a letdown, or you've tried everything. You've even tried escape and it hasn't quite worked for you yet. At the beginning of the reading, you've got the Eight of Swords in the reverse. Now, this is good, actually. When it was in the upright, there is a certain element of blindness about it. In most of the tarot packs, the person who's in the Eight of Swords, there will always be the same theme. The swords will go to a certain point, but there's a clear way out. 
they have a blindfold on. When it's in the reverse, you don't have a blindfold on any longer. You can see what's going on, Leo. You just don't especially like it and you'd like to get out of it. You'd like to change it. For some of you, you don't want to be on your own. This is the Nine of Pentacles that looks like Conchita from Eurovision. Love this card. In the upright, it's a happy single person card. It's everything growing in the garden. You planted it, you've grown the money, you look after the garden, you've got nice clothes, you're independent and you're happy to be so. When it's in the reverse, you're not happy to be so. You want to be with somebody. Or you want, maybe you work at home or you're a stay-at-home parent and you want to be out more. You want to be out there. You want to be connecting. Feel like you are feeling a lack of connection, Leo. Real lack of connection. However, you do have two aces. So if you think of aces being up your sleeve, you've got everything up your sleeve. It's just this energy has to play out first. I would very much for you, Leo, watch out for the full moon in Sagittarius. This comes on the 9th of June. Does various things, this full moon in Sagittarius. It's a time when you can think about your beliefs, about what's really true. There's a lot of truth about it. There's a lot of illusion to be swept away. Um, your belief system about how you're going to live, how you want to live. You may discard people or things which are not part of that. Also, this time of the Sagittarian full moon is a time if you do feel, and some of you do, <coughs> that you were being lied to about something or someone was pulling the wool over your eyes, that will very clearly come to view. You won't need to go digging around. You won't need to see, you know, check this and look. No, it will come. It will be almost like, you know, when the clouds part and there's a full moon and it's like, boom, it's almost as bright as the sun. It will show, it will show you what's going on. And that will be a huge relief. Part of the reason here, part of the reason that you can't move on with this card is because Mercury in Aquarius is blocked. You can't think what it is that's bothering you. There's something underlying this that's really bothering you. Don't think too hard about it, Leo. Don't, um, don't ponder it too much. It won't get you the answers you require. If... If you wait for the full moon, especially if you do any full moon rituals of asking, just opening your heart and asking for the truth, it will dive in and come to you. I'm just going to do you, I'm clearing these cards, I'm going to do you a quick love reading actually. I haven't done this with all of them but I feel like, I feel like you need it. <laughs> so let's have a look. I'm just going to give these a good shuffle. I'm kind of feeling this deck for you today as well. I would normally switch over to the Rider weight, but I want to stick with this one. Really hard to shuffle these as well because they're quite stiff. Do check out as well, I've done a weekly love reading this week, so you might want to have a look at that. There's also a weekly tarot reading from the 27th of May to the 3rd of June, which is time stamped for all astrological signs. In the meantime, let's have a little, just do a, just going to pull six cards and some other love oracle cards for you, Leo. I feel like this is really important. What does Leo need to know about the love life? June 2017. By the way, when you're hearing this reading is the right time for you. Oh my God, that's <laughs> so weird. Okay. That's good. Great. Whew! 
Okay, we're going to have nine cards for your love life, Leo. <laughs> it's like when they take your blood pressure at the doctors and it does the one tightening and then it goes in for a second one. You know the doctor's eyebrows are going to be raised, okay? If I'm the love doctor, Leo, my eyebrows are being raised here. I see something, I smell something. I'm going to look at it. That one. Wow. Okay. Leave me comments after this reading, Leo. Because <laughs> I want to know. Being really... That one. Oh my God. The last four cards are Major Arcana. And they're so powerful. This deck feels so powerful, Leo. you got some real important stuff going on with your love life. <sighs> right. Guess what? Six of Swords reversed comes up again as the first card. Not being able to escape something. And then we have the Seven of Pentacles. The King of Swords. The Sun. We love this. It's nice actually. Major Arcana. The Nine of Wands in the middle of the reading. The Tower in the reverse. Major Arcana. The Empress. Major Arcana. Temperance reversed, major arcana, judgment, major arcana, <laughs> Leo, you know it's powerful, it's very, very powerful, no wonder my cards were feeling zingy, this reading is giving off, I don't know what to call it, it's like spiritual heat, okay, in the middle, in the middle of my nine cards, we've got the nine of wands. This is a need to defend yourself. Here we are. This person has set up a defense. Ships are being dashed against the rocks, but they're not going to be dashed against you. In the rider weight, this is a man who has rods built around him and then he's got one and he's like this and it's going diagonal. It's like, no, you're not coming near me. Not anymore. You feel the need to defend yourself. I have a hunch. It's not going to be for everyone. I have a hunch you're dealing with an air sign. King of Swords is so strong and powerful in the reading. And just right there, Gemini, Libra or Aquarius, or if they've got Sun, Moon and Rising, or even if they just look or behave like an air sign, there's air sign energy, also because Six of Swords, that's an air sign card. This person is very balanced and is very rational. We've got the scales, we've got the sword. But where you are emotional and expressive and need that connection, you know we were talking about the lack of connection, they don't need that connection they are if you look at the colors of this card they are grayer and steelier and happier where they are they can do without it but they still feel there's a relationship they can be controlling they can be in my anna k tarot deck they are a chess player they know the moves they know what they're doing this is unnerving for you and you're trying to defend yourself but at the same time you're not able to get in the boat for some of you, the sexual chemistry with this person is off the charts. I'm not saying that's helping or hindering, it's just there. It's off the charts. For some of you, there are issues to do with female reproduction. Men or women, it could be her, it could be if you're a woman, you. But there are issues in this relationship to do with female reproduction. We've got the Empress to do with either pregnancies miscarriages, children you already have together, mothering. There are issues to do with wanting children, <coughs> excuse me, wanting promises made that haven't been kept, 
possibilities slipping away, disappointments, impatience, temperance in the reverse, feeling impatient. Seven of Pentacles, this is people considering how far they've come together. They've nailed the Pentacles up here. This means we're looking at how hard we've worked, how long we've been together. For some of you, this is an X and you're thinking about how long you were together, what you did together, or they're thinking about it with you. But still the need to defend yourself in the middle. Tower in reverse as well. You are resisting something. You feel when the tower comes, it is a bolt of lightning. It's an epiphany. It's spirit moving things along because of all the red flags that have cropped up. And it's not a criticism of anybody. It's being in the situation is so much harder, isn't it? That when the little signs come, your intuition isn't there. You are frightened. You are trying to defend yourself. You are you know, uh, there's chemistry knocking around, but sometimes you can't or you won't observe the signs. The tower will come to hit this tower of pretense and to blow it away. However, it's usually quite a rude awakening, like you find out they've cheated on you or you find out or there's some difficulty with a pregnancy or something, a big thing, a big issue comes or you just have a crisis yourself you know, I can't do this anymore, but you then talk yourself into it that you can. And that's where this Six of Swords in reverse comes in. You feel like you should be escaping and you can't, which is a, it's a power that cancels itself out. It's a feeling of helplessness. I'm just going to take a clarifier on that tower. I'll just do this card first. The last card we have here is Judgment. You see the three figures here that are coming out of caskets, they're like little mummies. This is past, present and future. You or the person you're involved with here are considering how you've behaved or about how this whole situation has played out in the past, in the present and how it could play out in the future. Let's have a look. Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm having that one. And that's gonna, oh, I've got two, good. Okay, you're gonna clarify the tower. You're gonna clarify the empress. One more. Let's clarify six of swords let's have a look what we've got this is anna k tarot that i'm using just to do my clarifiers okay good yeah there he is whoa that's really interesting for the six of swords we get judgment again card number 20 major arcana so we already had judgment down here we've got two major arcana judgment cards Some of you may even be dealing with someone with a criminal record or with something that's definitely needing to be looked at in the courts in terms of traditional judgment. For others of you, this is a karmic debt of sorts. You're going to be feeling like it is. Doesn't mean you have to stick with it necessarily. It could be a soulmate relationship in the more... Not necessarily, wow, you've met your soulmate, but... That kind of soul contract where there are lessons, hard lessons, deep lessons being learned by both of you, which feel really tricky and difficult for you. For the Empress, again, we get the Knight of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius card. I feel like you are dealing with an air sign or someone who thinks and behaves like an air sign. For some of you as well, this is to do with surgery, to do with fertility. Um, you've, this Knight of Swords card can mean that. Or, or IVF or anything to do with that, to do with hospitals and fertility. The Tower in the reverse. The Three of Rods. It's kind of a new beginning. 
but it's not beginning from nothing. Three of Rods is a card of, you can see this person is slightly more a little adventurer, just starting to stake out the new ground. If you think of the tower as being brought to the ground, this is going over the bottom of it and looking for how you can build new foundations. I like that. Now, underneath all this, you've got the sun and this is your card, Leo. This is a beautiful, beautiful, stonking Major Arcana card. It shines out. You can see it here as well in the Judgment card. Moving towards the sun. You are moving towards the sun. You just need to... You just need to hang on in there, actually, until this full moon. It's not like you can do something simple and this will all just evaporate. I am actually... I'm going to do a Heart of the Fairy Oracle card for you, Leo, as well. Leave me comments definitely about this. Such an interesting reading for you this month. That one. Yes. The Remembrance. The first instinct I get from this card is some of you are grieving. Some of you are grieving a lost relationship or even someone who has passed over. Um, there's a remembrance, literally a remembrance. For others of you remembering what you had with somebody and going through this whole process, it's what judgment is, going through the past, the present and how you can move on in the future and what happened where these two people have got the pentacles nailed, looking at each one and how it, how it built and what the history is. I'm also just going to check. Ugh. That's where these fairy cards come from. Heart of the Fairy Oracle. Let me just check the remembrance. There's something else about that card. Yeah. I'm going to read this actually because it's important. When you move from one state or one thing to another, what's an important lesson to remember? Lesson learned and things achieved are as are important to remember as you travel along your path. Be aware of what you need to bring with you as you move forward. How did you approach a situation last time? Was it successful? As you look at the remembrance, what do you see in his eyes? Think of the important things you've learned in the past and take them with you to use on your new journey. That is the same as judgment almost. I'm just going to have a quick look at a couple of Chuck Spezzano love cards. This is just for the future. Because I do realise this is quite yeah, a deep reading. You never know what's going to happen with these readings there. You have to go with them, don't you? Oh, you definitely. Wow, <laughs> Leo, come on. Tell me what's going on. Disillusionment. Now, do you see how somebody sees a knight in the front of the painting? There's your knight of swords. They didn't turn out, perhaps, to be the knight in shining armour. This is disillusionment. You look behind and actually they were just a human. That doesn't mean they're a bad person. You know, things are never that simple, are they? This is just to do with the tower coming down. There's a certain element of control. For some of you, this is about being controlled by somebody and not being able to escape. That's the Six of Swords. Or maybe you felt mutual desire to control each other. That can happen in a soul contract relationship. And one of the lessons to learn from that is to love without control, unconditional love, which doesn't mean, obviously, accepting bad behaviour towards you or letting your boundaries be busted. Unconditional love still has boundaries in terms of how you need to be treated to feel good for unconditional love towards yourself, but it's love without controlling another. And a fear of inadequacy, this could be you or them, 
or the dynamic that plays out between you is a fear of inadequacy, that's somewhere involved in this relationship dynamic. I'm going to do a healing with the angels oracle card, Leo. Definitely leave me a comment, though, if you want to, obviously. I mean, some things are private, but just such a powerful reading for you today. Love that. Okay, you have intentions. Set your intentions wisely and gently. You know, it can be in this situation, you're going to intend to do this and you intend to do that and then you quickly feel like you've failed and you boomerang from massive intention to I'm never going to do anything. Softly set small intentions to do with how you are going to move on and I don't necessarily mean leave somebody, I just mean move on together or apart or whatever it is. Like this, towards a brighter future, but how are you going to do that while being kind to yourself? Leave me a comment, Leo. If you want to book a private reading, you can do so in the description box below. Whew. See you soon. Okay, bye.